daylight inside my grow tent, 22 degrees. I need to harvest this, so this has been growing in here for the last couple of months. Since winter sets in, so now it's time to harvest this. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. I love this fruit. One pepino. And there's another one over there, can you see it? So I'll just go harvest this. Okay, I've just been waiting and waiting for them to ripen. <laughs> now it's got that purple stripe. So this one's not as much, but that one there has got that strong purple purpling on the surface of this beautiful fruit. So I'm going to have this for dinner tonight. This is going to be our dessert with ice cream. Of all the years that I've been growing orostakis, every winter they would die because I'd leave them outside planted in the ground and they don't survive the winter. They will die down, so which means they go dormant and come back again in spring. So less than four weeks and it will be spring. And this one here has survived because I have been growing it inside this grow tent where the temperature has been maintained. <laughs> You have to say hello, Pedro, because this is our 200 uh, vlog video, which we are not going to do some more vlogs. We are still going to be seeing Pedro, but not on the vlogs. Hey, we're going to do a special budgie video. Hey, see, look at you. You were about to talk a while ago, and now you stop talking. Say kiss, kiss. Okay, that's enough. Mommy, continue, baby P. So it is possible to grow orostakis inside indoors during winter if you bring them indoors near a window where you get plenty of bright light now in here it doesn't have direct sunlight because my grow light is about two meters i think 1.6 meters away from this plant uh the ultraviolet rays or lights can you see the grow light there there's some little dots there it's got the uv light there which is necessary for uh, succulent growth as well or else they would grow leggy like most of these ones here are sort of leggy because of that because they're not reaching the light and as a good example of how good how important <laughs> the UV light is is this Graptoveria mule I think grab to see them this is grab to see the mule so I'm gonna take this one here this is grown in here which is only about see the distance so that's probably about 700 uh, millimeters away from the source of the light and the intensity of the light you can see that's the brightest it gets that's a hundred percent max and this is the lowest but anyway I'll take this mule and I'll compare this with the mule that I have been growing in here in my other grow light who's decided to talk yeah you want to talk okay so this is now a grab to see the mule the bird was talking a while ago, and the minute I turned the camera on, he stopped talking. Eh? So, this is now the mule that was inside that grow tent, which has got a not so good, I would say, grow light compared to this other grow light that I've got going in here. So this one here, this Graptosedum mule here, you can see the difference. That one is just so skinny, and this one is so fat. And considering this is only like a leaf, look, one leaf, and yet, look how fat that is. So I have a few grab the seed mule that are still growing in here, which are these ones here. And some of them doesn't even have roots. It's formed a keloid, like that little round bump there. So it's like some people are keloid formers like this one. So this one doesn't even have anything. It's just a big, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> knob. <laughs> That's a knob. <laughs> compared to this other one now which also had a knob but in time has formed roots so these ones now like say for example that one I've taken one of them just to see if it's gonna grow let's take that off one hand this is really very hard gently there you go I'll just squeeze it remove that and there you go drop that down and normally it's much cleaner than this but I've got a camera and a budgie on one hand who's still like Paying attention, aren't you, Pedro? Listening attentively. Yes, you are. Now, this one now, what I did with a former contemporary of this one <laughs> is that one there. So I removed, look, it's also got a keloid forming, and I removed it and just sat it on top of this coconut coir. 
and it started growing roots. Now this one, I will do the same. I will leave that there to grow some roots. And that one now is just impressive. This one now is just so fat compared to that other one here. And considering that this one has been grown much further away from my large SP3000 grown like moss hydro here, and it has grown really, really well. So this is the biggest of my leaf grown Ionium Mardi Gras that I've grown from a leaf uh, on the 11th of April, 2023. You can see the date. <laughs> and I harvested 17 leaves. And the only ones that formed are the big one, one. And this one is about an inch, two. Beep, 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 good boy, I know. Now, so you got one, two, three, four, and five. Maybe that one to six that has actually grown and oh seven seven there's another one here and the rest of them have just dried up you can see there's all dry leaves there so out of 17 there's one two three four five six seven seven that has grown and maybe by the time this would be fully grown i'd be lucky if i get three but chances are i'll get two this one and two so if you were to grow, I'm going to go back to this Graptosedum mule. If you were going to grow Graptosedum mule, make sure that it gets plenty of light and it has a coating of farina, that white powdery stuff, look, that's coming off, that can protect it from the sun. So, but you have to introduce this slowly. Like this one now, I'm taking this one outside now and grow it outside. So I have to acc acclimate this slowly. So that means take it out into my 50% UV shade cloth area and slowly expose it to the sun eventually as springtime comes. This is my Graptoveria judata that was hit by a frost. I'm going to put a link down below here to the video when this got actually hit by the frost and nearly died. And so now it has fully recovered and also the stolons that has grown from it, you can see that they are starting to form roots. There you go. So there's little roots forming there, every single one of them. And also that one there. And the one, the stolen that died out, is all dry that I harvested. This is almost dead, but now look at it. It's forming roots as well. See the little roots? There you go. And it's still alive. So this is now a matter of just sticking it in the soil and that should grow. And also the propagation I have here has started to form its own little baby as well. Look at that. So... Now, oh look, two, there's two of them. I didn't even see the other one. So now this one is now ready to go outside as well. So I'm taking this outside to <laughs> grow outdoors because now we're still going to get frost, I'm sure, but it wouldn't be as severe as the ones we've been getting this past few weeks. This is my view through my kitchen window. So when I'm cooking or washing the dishes, this is what I see. Especially those ones in there. Every day I see them and I just gasp and amazed by their beauty. So let's go have a closer look. Especially the big bowls, the <laughs> red bowl and the one behind it. So the sun is just in my eye. It's four o'clock in the afternoon and these plants are just amazing. So this one, okay, I'll take them down first so I don't drop them. So these three plants has been amusing me for the past few days. Well, actually weeks as I see the color changes. So first we're going to take a look at, hang on, we'll, we'll start with this one. Okay, so this is a big pot that I've got a few months ago. So it wouldn't be a year, it's less than a year old, uh, this pot here. And so there are different succulents in here. So we've got the one in the center. This is Hawothia Koaktata. It's very, every time I see this, it reminds me of a dragon, basically. It's like hard and look nice and red. Having been placed where it is, it's exposed to the elements. So we had frost and there was a baby growing in here and it died. So that baby is gone. So I was hoping I could get a baby on the, uh, via the flower stalk. So this is the flower stalk. I'll just pull this out. There you go. Okay, so they're gone. So there's another baby here, but that two have died. But that's okay. You know why? Look at it underneath. If we pull the weeds, <laughs> look, there's baby sticking out here. 
and babies coming out of there as well. Look at that. So there's a few in there. Now this one, I don't know what plant this is, but it died. It's an Echeveria or Graptoveria or something like that. But, oh, might not be dead quite yet. Even though you've seen the top the way it is. Look, there's still new growth there. So what I'm going to do with that one is just break that off. Best to have something to cut it, but it doesn't matter if you haven't got a cicatrice or something to snip it with. But that should grow next springtime when the weather warms up. So the one in the center here is maybe Sedevaria Silver Star Mabina. And of course, the one on the edge here, the beautiful red one has been giving me so much pleasure every time I see it. Through my kitchen window is called Red Hole. It's just beautiful color. But the only thing I don't like about this plant is that I believe they only color up like that when the temperature is low or when it cools down or during winter. So during summer when it gets hot again, I think they will go green again like in the center there, but it doesn't matter. So I get to find out anyway, because when I got them, they were still green and now they have colored up. So hopefully the color will stay. I just had a close inspection of the stem here. These two stems are actually from the same plant. So some of them uh, are protected from the frost or survived the frost, but those two obviously are more exposed and they're the ones that got damaged by the frost. Isn't that beautiful? And also uh, I need to remove some of this to give it room to grow because once they have space, it will grow a little bit bigger like this one. So I think the biggest ones of the red hole would have to be, say, this one here. And this is the biggest one I've got growing in its individual pot. And this one as well is sort of a semi-protected area. It's not really exposed. So I thought I'll expose these small ones to see how they fare. And now that I know they will do well, then this springtime I can put them in the garden somewhere. This one here is absolutely beautiful. I love this plant. It's nice and big. Look at that. It's beautiful and it's flowering at the moment. So I'm hoping to get some seeds from this one. If those ones grow, I might even try and cross pollinate it with something equally beautiful. I can't think of anything right now because it will have to match up with whatever I've got flowering. But this one in the bottom here, one of the leaves, okay, that leaf there, maybe two of them, are starting to show signs of variegation. So whether it actually variegates, I don't know. And underneath, there's babies growing. So this one, I need to report it. And did I mention what name it is? It's called Pink Crystal. And I paid $28 originally for one plant that's probably a little bit bigger than this one here. But now it has grown to this huge, beautiful, striking looking plant. So this is also worth propagating. Also, there's a version of this that I bought recently, which is called Crystal Rose. So I'm just wondering whether it's the same one, but the other one, hang on, I'll go get it. So I've got them side by side. So this is just Pink Crystal and this one is Crystal Rose. So I think there might be two different plants because this one even have like a whiter look about it. So it's more like Colorado or something like that hybrid. Whereas this one is more like Elegance, maybe Reuben or Romeo hybrid. And this gorgeous one here that's in desperate need of propagating or separating from the mother plant, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because they're all flowering. See, the center there, they might be flowering and that one there is throwing off a pup like this one, so another plant. So I only started with a clump of three when I got this in a year and a half ago and now it has maybe two years but anyway so now this has grown a lot of heads so i got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so if you look at the rate of growth if you have a clump of three and it has grown into ten so seven <laughs> new plants in two years <laughs> it's gonna take a long time before i could have a lot of them to put in the garden because they do take time to grow but in saying that this beautiful hyalina's choice here i've just found another version or maybe that should be the original so this one is probably a hybrid of this hyalina so this is so beautiful this plant 
and I've been admiring this plant next to it that I got with no name. So it didn't have a name, so I gave it a name called Sweet Violet. Friend named um, Violet that passed away a couple of years ago. So every time I see this plant, I think of her. So now that I've got this Hyalina here, I would say that this is actually the same plant. Now, whether this Hyalina here will grow into the size of this Sweet Violet here, only time will tell, but they look very much similar. And even the flowering or the flower here, look, the stem growing, and also that one is about to flower as well, throw off some flower stalks. If the flower look the same, then chances are they are exactly the same plant. I've just reported my red edge, also known as Echeveria lipstick. I got avoid this last night in this beautiful pot. Look how nicely it's suited that pot. It just pops out, isn't it? It's beautiful. With this Echeveria Agavoides Red Edge, I've been doing a few experiments because I want to put them in the garden. But I find that if you put them in a lot of soil, you're going to end up with Red Edge that looks like that. And this is planted in a big pot here. You can see that the plants, most of them, that's Agovoides number 40, most of them are really huge, they're quite big. Anyway, it would have to be at least 20 centimeters across if I go from tip to tip of that one there. And this one is how many, this is at least, I think about seven or eight inches. Anyway, in saying that, so the color is more green with a red edge. And on the top here with less soil, this is what they look like. So if planted in a small pot, like in the case of this one, they can grow beautiful color. This is the only way you can color it then. If you give them less soil and less waterings. I would fatten them up in spring, give them lots and lots and lots of water and don't water them for the rest of the year and they can sustain themselves. So now it's quite soft now, but it has survived the frost. The soil when I dug it out last night were all really bone dry but the plants looks absolutely beautiful now in talking about red edge or lipstick I have this red edge here that I just dumped there it's more like experimentation so this has been dumped in here for about a year and a half so I've got concrete <laughs> I could not put it in the garden bed there because it will have contact with the soil so what I did is I put it in the box and the box has already deteriorated as you can see and this poor thing has survived all this time look I lift it up don't break Oh, I'm terrible, but it has survived. So there's a bit of root right there, but it doesn't matter. See, this goes to show, hang on, I'll, I'll step on that one there. Look, the roots are showing, so there's no soil. This poor plant, which is a cluster, has been living its life in here for a year and a half, almost two years actually, and dump on that box there. And I just push it on the side there and they're still alive. That goes to show that Agavoides doesn't need that much watering. So give them a little bit of soil and they will thrive, they will grow, they're not gonna die on you, they wanna survive. Just like this one here, this is actually under all uh, the shelf. So I've got a few shelvings up the top. So it's got a one, a two, a three, a four. This is on the ground floor. So this is lipstick as well. And look, I cut it, one plant. Now it's flowering. And guess what? It's just sitting on granite. Look, <laughs> it was a cutting. So I thought, I'll just see how long before you die. And it did not die. So this is about almost two years as well. It's been sitting there. And it even put out babies. So this is how hardy these plants are. Now this is a Cheveria agavoides, lipstick or red edge. Now behind me I have another plant here, this is an aloe. This aloe is sitting, the pot broke and then I threw the pot away and this one I just dump it there and again look what I did to it. No soil, no roots because the 
the most of the soil actually was still in the pot. So the whole plant, I just dump it there and I want to see how long it can survive. I think this is Alo Aristota, if I'm not mistaken. So I will Google it up and give you the right name. But this plant shows that it doesn't need that much soil to survive. And it even flowered at one stage while it's in its soilless state. When they start flowering, that's an indication that one should look out for ants look and mealybug so now i need to spray that and it's four o'clock in the afternoon and as per usual i'm using my tomato insect and fungus spray it actually kills the aphids as well as well as it doesn't kill the ants but they seem to go away and it doesn't hurt the the flower buds or the budding flowers of the succulents i am now ready to take my whimsy out. This whimsy, I still have, look, the variegated original plant in there. And this one now, I need to propagate and propagate and propagate because they are not gonna grow on their own. I'm waiting for the flower, but it hasn't come yet. It hasn't flowered ever since. So there is something broken with this plant that that's why it doesn't produce flowers. And if it doesn't produce flowers, that is no good, so we have to only propagate via cuttings or leaf propagation. But anyway, I need to find a spot for that so I can put something else in here that needs protecting. Oh, there's another whimsy again. Oh my goodness, they're so fat and cute. But anyway, I have to give them fertilizer as well and see how well they will grow. And I'm looking at my sitar here. This one is not coloring that much compared to my other sitar that's grown on the other side there. So maybe it's a different strain. I don't know, but that used to be really, really pretty. The crested ones, at least. But this one just grew out of it. So it grew a normal one. So I want to separate it and put it in a separate pot. If I have to go through all my plants that I've got here so far, I have almost a thousand variety of Echeveria alone that are alive. <laughs> so my head is spinning like I don't know what I've got. If I don't list them, I will forget. So luckily, <laughs> I'm a stickler for listing and labeling unless the birds try to pick on my labels. I found a few plants that I've lost labels because uh, the birds has been taking this small white label like that. They've been pulling them out and maybe taking it to their nest. So especially over there on that side there, where <laughs> the other side of the garden. And anyway, there's so many plants here that I have to move things around now that spring is about to sprung only uh, another three weeks and it's springtime and we and the next 14 days we only have today's monday only friday that we're gonna get frost uh, minus one but i'm sure it's not gonna happen because the weather is warming up so maybe we're experiencing the la nina on this side of uh the globe a few but, years ago was the first time I saw this plant. This is called the Cheveria Riga. And it was at the nursery or a local nursery and I didn't buy it. And then I went to a succulent cellar in our area and she's got one of them. And I said, I asked her, what sort of plant is that? Is that what sort of a disease? <laughs> I asked her and then she said, it's not a disease. That's the nature of the plant. They have those black spots like that. So anyway, at the time I could not see the value of this plant. But now, after seeing Morticia here, she used to look much prettier than this, but right now she is flowering. So I believe this is a hybrid of Agavoides and maybe that Echeveria Riga. And with the flick, maybe some Saragossa. <laughs> so it's, this is a bits of plant, bits of this and bits of that. But now it translated into this beautiful, fat, black, I don't know, sort of mysterious looking plant. Hopefully the flower will bloom and the seeds will set so that I can grow uh, this plant from seeds and have an army full of morticia. Now I just have to find a Gomez. Well, this is not a Gomez. This is a black Munro. So I would say this is Bloody Maria cross Munro. 
to come up with this plan. So Monroe hybrid, it says, but some uh, are calling this Black Monroe. A few weeks ago, I shown a video of this Canopytum, and I said by next year, or in a few months' time, this would fill up the whole pot. And look what it's doing now. It's almost filling up the pot. So I would say, I think I need to transplant this. So as a few of my Crassula that are mostly here. So this is Crassula elegans. That is such a beautiful plant. It's got all that textured texture on the surface. Look at that. They're gorgeous. But this one is still in its original pot, in its original soil when it was given to me. So I need to transplant that. And this one I've already killed, I think. One of my variegated... Yes, I killed it. Oh my goodness. Did I kill you? I think this is a variegated something. <laughs> it is. Never mind. So this was given to me. I'm sorry. You're dead now, but... Hang on, will you come back? I don't know. I'll put you there just in case. But anyway, guys, that's all I've got for this video. This is the last video for my vlog. 200. And that doesn't mean I'm not doing any more long videos or vloggy videos. But I would really like to concentrate on one topic or one plant. Instead of being all over the place. I will still have all over the place videos like uh, <laughs> updates but most of the vlogs now are gonna be talking about succulents instead because so far I think I have talked about succulent videos six I think so far so maybe I should do number seven I'm gonna start with number seven but that way I can talk about a specific plant or a specific method of uh, growing succulents or a specific group of succulents instead of just being wishy-washy all over the place like I normally do with my vlogs but anyway that's all I've got for this video and this corner is looking absolutely beautiful look at that it's just so gorgeous so for my 200 video oh look the jonquil is flowering can you see that see I told you it's warming up soon it won't be winter anymore, it will be spring and then summer. Now I have to deal with the heat of the sun. So that one now is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, huge amestro. This is already a baby. This is already my own propagation that I've grown into this big, massive, huge amestro. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got because I have to cook dinner. Hubby wants some. Um, oh, look, see this one? Imagine putting this up because this is like uh, about almost a meter and a half across Harvesting all of that and putting it in a pot and see how we grow it instead of just growing it gangly like this I thought of a way of growing this way. I can maintain the shortness or compactness of the plant Anywho, I am going to say goodbye for now from my garden to your <laughs> screen oh my goodness this is I love this plant I am obsessed with this plant I still remember when this was being sold for $50 a plant and I refused half the size and I refused to buy it and now I have so many of them that it's ridiculous <laughs> I get them $10 for a cluster but then again if it's grown to this size I would not part with this for less than $50 as well. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Ah, look at this thriller pearl. They're growing and then that one, that crispate beauty. And oh, the biggest, fattest lithops that I have. Look at that. They are huge. They are like, look, phenomenal. They're big, big. And speaking of which, Look what I've done to, look what I've done to my lithops. Those are all seed grown, so they have to be taken out of that and also repotted. I've just been watching these ants that I sprayed earlier, and I think they are dying. So maybe that stuff is not good for bees as well, because if it can kill ants, it can also kill the bees. So it's best to spray them late in the afternoon when the bees are not active. 
and I just saw this aphids flu aphid one flew into is that an aphid nah it's a seed <laughs> see look at the ant it's like struggling I think it's drunk look at you I'm sorry now you're dead and then those ones there as well look at that I'm sorry so that fungus spray must be nasty stuff and also the aphids that's on it they just seem to dry up they wither and die. Look, that one is struggling. I'm sorry. Can't even run to save its life. Poor thing. But you can't be here. Look, look at that one. See, look how slow that is. Oh.